Hey, my name is Hartwood and today we are going to take a look at a lot of games using the brand new 2021 version of the MSI Alpha 15, which comes with the 80W AMD RX 6600 M GPU and 16GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM and in this version accompanied only by a Ryzen 5 5600H 6 core 12 thread CPU, which will do a fine job as you will see pretty soon. All games have been tested at Full HD and been recorded with a capture card so there is no FPS loss, but the appearance can sometimes look a bit more unsmooth as it actually is. I can assure you that as the laptop has a FreeSync monitor, the experience was pretty much always super buttery smooth and fluid. I was also running the extreme performance mode of the MSI Alpha 15 to ensure maximum fan speeds and maximum performance. If you enjoy this kind of content make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more laptop reviews and GPU comparisons and gaming tests. Cheers! Now let's start with the games. In Horizon Zero Dawn I was getting an average of 68 FPS on high settings with a grade 1% low of around 58 FPS. The game ran absolutely fluid and smooth and in this case you could actually use the balanced mode, cap the FPS at 60 and enjoy some quieter fans if you're not insisting on getting more than 60 FPS at all costs. Assassin's Creed Valhalla on very high settings ran about the same as Horizon Zero Dawn and achieved an average of 65 FPS with a good 1% low of 48 FPS. Frame times were good and you could once more consider capping the FPS at 60 to stabilize the frame rate a bit, but anyhow a perfect experience. 6 cores and 12 threads are definitely enough for Valhalla. In Overwatch I was using ultra settings at 100% resolution scaling, achieving a very high average of 226 and a 1% low of 134 FPS in a training match against bots. Since in my opinion the graphical differences on the higher levels are marginal, there is no need for maximum settings in this game. You won't note any graphical details in the battle anyhow, just use the settings that you like most. For PUBG I was using the high settings preset and saw an average of 110 FPS and a 1% low of 69. To fully utilize the 144Hz screen, you surely could lower the settings to medium if you prefer it that way. Anyhow, as you can see the frame time graph was very stable and smooth, delivering a great experience. You won't be able to blame your hardware when getting killed in this title, I guess. Red Dead Redemption 2 ran noticeably faster using the Vulcan API. I have to point out that I had quite some crashes until I was able to choose the settings that I wanted and had the game running. And on DirectX 12 the performance was terrible to say the least. Anyhow, with Vulcan and high settings plus ultra textures, I saw a very nice average of around 74 FPS and a 1% low of 51 FPS, delivering a perfect experience once more. Forgive my bad gameplay in Hunt Showdown which is running with CryEngine 3 and resulted in an average of 91 FPS on the high preset with a perfect 1% low of 65 FPS. Definitely a great experience if you know how to play the game, which I clearly don't. Uh, I mean, who would shoot insect-like black bug cloud monsters with, with a gun when we all know you need a nice deodorant and a lighter for such... Well, I didn't actually say that, <clears throat> freak. In Apex Legends I was actually using very high settings and still getting pretty high average of 128 FPS with a great 1% low of 91 FPS. That's just a perfect experience combined with the 144Hz screen. If you insist on more FPS you could clearly lower the settings a bit without sacrificing too much visual fidelity. But once more I guess you can't blame the machine when getting killed. Ah, damn it! Stupid In Battlefield 5 I saw an average of 107 FPS on high settings with a 1% low of, well, to be honest, I can't tell you the 1% low in Battlefield as this game needs to be played for quite a while before it starts stuttering. I've experienced that on many systems over the last month and years. It just needs to load all the sounds and textures, I don't know, for once before you can actually get a smooth gameplay. And once you've done that, it changes the map. And as I can't spend 3 hours just benching Battlefield 5, you'll have to get 
on without ever knowing the actual 1% low. I'm kidding. The 1% 1 low was for control I was choosing DirectX 11 as the game heavily underperformed in DirectX 12. With a high preset, which is basically almost the maximum possible setting I guess, I was getting an average of 62 FPS and a 1% low of 48 FPS, rendering it very playable for a triple A title. Okay, I forgot to mention that suddenly Jesse's body totally disappeared and I felt like Harry Potter using the cloak of invisibility. Well, that screams bug fix or driver update, I guess. For CSGO, I was choosing the highest settings, resulting in an average of 254 and a 1% low of 140 FPS on Dust 2, which is a map I actually played for the first time in the year 2001, when the old World Trade Center was still around and some of you were still pooping their diapers. Fun fact, that does not make me a good CSGO player, like, at all. Paired with the 144Hz screen, you'll get a very good experience for this title. But then again, CSGO runs on a... Jedi Fallen Order is a bit like Battlefield 5 in terms of 1% lows. It'll take a while until the game loaded everything to its satisfaction and... Therefore, I got an average of 90 FPS on the highest epic settings and a 1% low of only 38 to around 40 FPS. But that would get better if you play for a while longer than I did. Since my save game for Metro Exodus was corrupted recently, thank you Epic, I was only using the integrated benchmark for this video. On high settings I was getting an average of 71 FPS with a 1% low of 40 FPS, which is probably because to that one weird scene in the benchmark where the FPS just go straight to hell even on a NASA machines. But I guess it's all good and well for a single player game. In The Witcher 3, which I always have the benchmark, I saw an average of 91 FPS on ultra settings without hair works, with a great 1% low of 73 FPS making the game perfectly enjoyable. But you know, it's 6 years old and um, so it better runs good on this laptop, right? In Warzone, I was choosing a mix of medium and high settings thanks to the lack of a preset, resulting in an average of frame rate of 110 with a 1% low of 65 FPS. Once again, I would actually assume that the 1% low will get better after playing 2 to 3 matches. Other than that, the game is perfectly playable, I guess. Look at me enjoying the great view. Damn it! Stupid laptop! I I couldn't even see the stupid refl In Cyberpunk 2077 I was choosing the high graphics preset and saw an average, okay average, of 56 FPS and a 1% low of 42 FPS over a period of 20 minutes of gaming. This is one of only two titles that didn't manage an average of 60 FPS on high settings, but that is clearly due to the game engine I guess. But other than that the game is playable in a good way. The Ryzen 5 in the MSI Alpha 15 kept the frame times just stable enough in my opinion. Hmm. Dicky Twister. Why the hell would you twist a dick? <clears throat> well, in Fortnite I was both testing the Epic preset to see the maximum the RX 6600M is capable of, as well as some so-called pro settings with everything set to low except the view distance set to Epic. With this epic preset I was getting a good average of 92 FPS with an also good average 1% low of 72 FPS. With the so called pro settings I saw an average of 233 FPS with a great 1% low of 195 FPS meaning you could use higher settings to get a comfortable 144 FPS average and then cap the FPS for a maximum instability. At least that is clearly what I would do for a 144Hz screen. Because screen tearing is bad. Really bad. To cover some indie games, I also tested Life is Strange True Colors on the very high preset resulting in a superb 94fps on average with a 1% low of 65fps. So you could probably, could probably choose the cinematic settings and cap it at 60, as you clearly don't need more than 60fps for that kind of games. Another indie title I've tested is Subnautica Below Zero, which on the highest preset resulted in a great average of 102 FPS 
with a fantastic 1% low of 84 FPS. You probably won't get much better than this. The game looks great, it runs great, everything is great. Yay! I'm kidding. If you haven't played Subnautica yet, do it. It's good. I was testing Watch Dogs Legion with a high preset resulting in a pretty good average of 80 FPS and a 1% low of 58 FPS. Weirdly, many people claim that its predecessors look better and I'm not sure what I think. But I know that you could ramp up the settings even further if you're okay with 60 FPS on a single player third person view action open world game and I'm sure I would be. Speaking of open world action games, I've tested GTA 5 with very high settings resulting in an average of 105 FPS and a 1% low of 86 FPS. But I have to add that I think the RX 6600M yet had problems with Rockstar games. I think it should perform better as even an RTX 2060 or RTX 3050 Ti can get these frame rates. Maybe it's just a question of driver optimization and AMD's so-called fine wine policy will help in the near future. I've also tested some strategy and building games and in Anno 1800 with high settings and FSR in quality mode I was getting an average of, well, it's actually hard to tell an average in Anno 1800 because it depends so much on the way you play it, on the size of your cities, on your CPU, on the island you're currently hovering over, on the angle of the camera. Well, you get it. So maybe we should just let the video speak for itself for a moment. So what do you think? But of course, it's perfectly playable anyhow. For Microsoft Flight Simulator I was using the high preset and saw a nice 53 FPS on average with a 1% low of 34 FPS while flying over the skyline of New York City. The game used to be an unoptimized mess but in my opinion it's actually doing pretty okay. The actual in-game movement and pace is kinda slow so you don't nearly really need super high FPS in my opinion. Next, Valorant should run on A. And so I was using the highest preset for a deathmatch, resulting in a save average of 205 with a high 1% low of 148 FPS. Ignore the numbers you see in-game as these were caused by a few lags at the first match after installing the game. I'm actually thinking about making a video in which I compare the performance of games right after they've been installed and started for the first time with the performance that you get after a few matches and while a while of gaming, I mean in every title, not just Valorant, because I'm pretty sure some of you would be amazed by the difference. So let me know in the comments of what you think about that idea. Cheers! I'm always completely overwhelmed when benchmarking ARC, not by the complexity but the disk space it needs for such an average look. Now that I've insulted all ARC fans, I'll let you know that I received an average of 66 FPS with a 1% low of 54 FPS. And as I never know what to do, how to, how to fairly bench this title, I'll just... Wait, what? Jesus! This game is more hostile than your mother-in-law. In Kingdom Come Deliverance, I saw an average of around 63 FPS with a 1% low of 30 FPS on high settings. But even though the frame rates were good, the frame times weren't. I'm not sure why this was, but I've experienced such chaotic frame time graphs with some weaker integrated GPUs and MX cards before. Maybe it's just another driver issue. So that's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want more laptop gaming stuff things. Comparison benchmarks, video nerd gaming, blah. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.